Hey folks, I'm Chris and I'm your Commander Mechanic. It's Budget Battle Box Week. If you aren't familiar with this concept, every year I take the summer set and build a series of four $50 budget decks, all tuned to be played against each other. This is perfect to carry around for game nights where you may want to play Commander unexpectedly or for teaching new players how to play Commander, or for lending people to play. Not only that, but it shows off just how good a budget brew can really be. We often get swept up in big, splashy, expensive cards we have access to in our format, but it's not hard to make a really strong deck on a strict budget. And the first of our decks this week is Abdel Adrian, Gryan's Ward. This 5 mana white 4 4 human warrior reads When Abdel Adrian enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non land permanents you control until Abdel Adrian leaves the battlefield. Create a 1 1 white soldier token for each permanent exiled this way. And on top of that, he has Choose a Background. With those abilities, Abdel Adrian makes a really strong Flicker style commander, using cards like Cloud Shift or Flicker of Fate to have Abdel enter and leave the battlefield repeatedly, blinking your own permanence and making a bunch of soldiers while getting repeated enters and leaves the battlefield triggers. While it's possible to make a mono white version of this deck, Abdel does have Choose a Background, so I've paired him with Candlekeep Sage, a simple background that says whenever a commander creature you control enters or leaves, leaves the battlefield, draw a card. That means that blinking Abdel Adrian, something we'll be focusing on doing, draws us two cards, one for leaving and one for entering. This is a great way to keep our hands full on top of getting a ton of value from our board state and making an army of 1-1s. With Abdel Adrian and Candlekeep Sage together, I've built a blue-white deck that focuses on teaching triggers and card advantage as primary goals. This can also help teach players the way the stack works, as much of the interaction with your own creatures happens at instant speed, making it awesome for teaching new or advanced players, or piloted expertly in the hands of an experienced player. All for just $50. If you want to check out the full list, you can click on the link in the description to my sponsor, Moxfield. Moxfield is the best deck building platform in the world, and really was essential in helping me put together this year's budget battle box. Filtering by card prices and having a run Running total deck cost means it really makes it easy to stay on budget and make additions or cuts using integrated Scryfall search. Be sure to follow my Moxfield profile for new brews each week. This deck is what's often referred to as a Flicker or Blink deck, an archetype based around Flicker effects that exile a creature temporarily and return them to the battlefield. This is used to do things like avoid targeted removal or reuse enters and leaves the battlefield triggers. Other commanders that do the same thing in these colors are Brago King Eternal, Ranar the Ever Watchful, or Yorion the Sky Nomad, all either blinking your creatures or caring when you flicker your permanents. The biggest benefit to Abdel Adrian though is that he, himself, exiles permanents on enters the battlefield. This means when we exile and return him, not only getting triggers from everything he has exiled, but we get his own triggers, over and over again. This results in tons of card advantage, life gain, and lots of 1-1 soldiers too. Let's take a look at the permanents we'll be blinking first. I've broken them down into three categories mainly, the first being our enters the battlefield effects. These permanents, like Circuit Mender, Icor Wellspring, or Omen of the Sea, all do cool things for us when they enter or leave the battlefield, whether that's filling our hands, gaining us life, or making more creatures. This also includes ramping. Yes, ramping in white and blue. Even on a budget, we can afford Solemn Simulacrum, Knight of the White Orchid, and Loyal Warhound. Now, the latter of the two won't really be doing much to help us after they've been blinked a few times, as they'll focus on catching us up to those that have ramped ahead of us, but Solemn can definitely aid in putting most of our basic lands onto the battlefield. Sun Titan is one of the heavy hitters to this end, helping reanimate small permanents we may have lost along the way, on top of being a 6 6 with Vigilance. And Meteor Golem is our biggest threat in the deck. Blinking him over and over can definitely set our opponents back by taking out the best permanent on the battlefield each time. The next category of permanent is our Flicker Enablers, like Soul Herder, Restoration Angel, and Teleportation Circle. These are permanents that will help flicker our commander for extra value, or flicker other permanents in case our commander becomes cost prohibitive to cast. This category also includes the aforementioned Yorion Sky Nomad 2, perfect for blinking other permanents and as a target for blinking as well. Turn a single target blink effect into a blink for your whole board. 
And the boogeyman in this deck is none other than Deadeye Navigator. Paired with any other creature, you could be blinking your board over and over for just two mana each time. There's a reason why this $8 card earns a spot in a $50 budget deck. The last category of permanent is the permanent that cares about other permanents entering the battlefield. Soul Warden and Rumor Gatherer are perfect examples here, caring when our creatures enter the battlefield to either gain us a ton of life or to help card quality and quantity. These two are going to be bread and butter creatures to have stick onto the battlefield, and your opponents will be struggling if they can't deal with these threats quickly. Now let's take a look at our spells. These are going to be how we're blinking our creatures with Ephemerate, Planter Incision, or Lazelle's Acrobatics, all acting at instant speed to help save a creature that might be on the chopping block, or to extend the value of our creatures. But blinking isn't all we can do in this deck. In blue and white we have premium interaction like an offer you can't refuse, or negate, helping us deal with potential problems on the stack, or removal like Swords to Plowshares and Generous Gift, both format defining interaction that allows us to be proactive and reactive at a moment's notice. We also have a few board wipes too. Great in our hands because we could potentially exile our entire board with Abdel Adrian, then Wrath, leaving our opponents creatureless with our entire army intact. These board wipes include by invitation only, which could cause us to sacrifice all of our little tokens and leave value creatures alive. Or Hour of Reckoning, which could leave our tokens alive and only our non-token creatures would be at risk, perfectly fine if they're all under our commander for instance. Now all of this leaves very little utility in the list, but I've ensured to add a few pieces that interact with tokens that we're creating. The first is Skull Clamp. Yes, that Skull Clamp. There's room for it even in a budget deck, believe it or not. Having a ton of 1 1 creatures to clamp up can keep us rolling in card advantage while our opponents struggle. And the second is Decanter of Endless Water. If we're drawing entirely too many cards, we'll need a way to keep them all when Reliquary Tower and Thought Vessel are too expensive for a budget brew. Lastly, we have Intangible Virtue. When you're ready to go swinging with those tokens, drop this enchantment to give them plus one plus one and vigilance to really put a hurt on. Now this wouldn't be a battle box if I didn't talk about the deck's strengths against the other decks in the box. Versus Baba La Saga, you'll have to get ahead on life total quickly, which is one of your deck's strengths. If you aren't blinking something to reset your life total repeatedly, you may be in trouble. But the Baba here doesn't exactly go wide, and will be sacrificing its own permanence, so you'll have an opportunity to chip in for damage over and over again. Don't let their life total get more out of control than yours does. Against John Irenicus, you are very well set. If he tries to give you nasty creatures that will work to set you back like a Phyrexian Soul Gorger, you can blink it and send it right back to him. But be careful about the creatures he gives other players. They'll be bigger and goaded, and you can expect them to be swinging at you if they have the opportunity. John is also packing a few board wipes too, so be cautious about over committing to the board too much. You may want to for value, but you may lose your best resources. And Raga Draga is going to be a challenge. They're going to be stompy and move really fast, faster than you'll be able to get your engines online. So be careful about an early beatdown. Your targeted removal is going to be crucial here, as removing Raga Draga himself shrinks that deck's entire board. And getting yourself ahead of their burn spells will be important too, so once they start generating a ton of mana, you can make sure your life total stays ahead of what they're capable of. Lastly for the upgrade. If you want to break budget and add some premium pieces to the deck, I'd start with Panharmonicon. You have so many enters the battlefield effects that Panharmonicon is just a value multiplier in the best possible way. Cathar's Crusade, while one of the most mathy cards ever, in this deck in particular, can easily turn that army of 1-1s you're making with your commander into 10-10s. It's worth it if you want to turn value into violence. And lastly, I love a good mill plan, and with the volume of permanence you have entering the battlefield, an altar of the brood could potentially turn your flicker engine into a 2-3 turn clock to mill your opponents out. Don't forget, Abdel can target his own tokens just to make more tokens. Putting this deck together was an absolute blast, and I was shocked at how good it could be for even less than $50. With a ton of the pieces being commons or uncommons, it's possible to build a popper commander list here too. Let me know what you think of the deck in the comments below and what you would do with your build. 
And remember to stay tuned all week for the rest of the Budget Battle Box. Hit that like button, subscribe, and as always, good luck and have fun.